Hi everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot. Um, this is going to be a soulmate snapshot and as promised yesterday, this one's going to be focusing back on this person who you've been in this soulmate connection with for some time now, um, but there's not, a, there hasn't been a solid connection and for a significant amount of time this person has run from you, whether or not you've really been chasing them, there's been a lot of running. Um, but in some cases, there's been some interplay. The energy with this person started coming back to kind of your direction in about the end of April. And it feels like their energy has been kind of sitting on top of yours pretty much ever since. And it's created some interesting dynamics as you guys have worked and tried to figure out exactly what you do with um, with those dynamics. Um but one of the things that came up is this feeling of I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Is it possible that I could become the runner? This is absolutely possible. And we're going to look into this today. Um, I thought it was an interesting question to come from a couple of you. It was kind of the discomfort mixed with that high energy of feeling that comes from it. Um, and, and so let's kind of look into the, the dynamics around that today. It'll be a general reading, even though it's one of these soulmate snapshots, um, general for this collective. And um, we're just going to kind of see what comes out. If this feels like it resonates with you, you might want to check out some of the other readings or maybe um, you might want to think about subscribing to the channel. So we're going to start with that energetic backdrop as always. Just kind of get a feel here for, um, I'm throwing my cards all over the place, get a feel for the energy that, um, that we're in. So we've got pain energy in here, memory of pain energy, um, in the emotional backdrop, in the, in the energetic and emotional backdrop right now, um, painful ending sort of energy. So something is, it's like a depression energy that's weighing on you that is not you, um, this is part of why you might be feeling a little bit of a need to run or to get away from this pressure because it's it's your person feeling the pain of that ending and finally allowing something to end here. Something is shifting. Um, something is shifting. They're spending a little bit too much energy kind of trying to control it, though. Um, and they're incredibly disappointed in themselves. You are feeling some of the energy of this disappointment in themselves, and it's coming at you almost like a, like it's sapping some of your energy away. And this, I think, is probably the main, um, this all feels like energy. You might just say, I got to get away from this, you know. Um, huh. It's, a, it's an imbalanced feminine. There's an imbalanced feminine energy, um, but it's an imbalanced feminine energy in both of you and definitely across the relationship. So they have they have um, created some injury in you during the course of this relationship that has caused you to not necessarily be able to give love as freely and easily as you did when you first um, came to them. And so what they're experiencing now is their energy wants to come to you for this and you're kind of like, get it off. You know, there's a there's a little bit of a sense of, you know what, you you weren't there when I needed you and I'm not really interested in being here for your smothering energy now. Honest to goodness, that feels so harsh and yet that feels like the energy of this right here. Um We've got the Kamar card, which is like the moon. Um, it's the equivalent of the moon, means moon. But there's there's a moonlight sort of feel to this. Um, it's like you can't, there's, there's only a little bit of a sliver of the positivity coming through that would usually come through in this energy. Um, and a lack of connection. Saw that earlier. Oh, I wish you could have this one. Um, there's a lack of connection to that higher power, um, lack of connection to the higher self. This is kind of um, a little bit of a dormant energy, a little bit of a dormant energy inside. So there's something that feels like in a rainy day sort of way, it just kind of hasn't awakened. Um, and yet it's there's some request being made of this energy, but it's not feeling like it's time to go. Hmm. 
Well, this explains perfectly why you might feel like um, you're turning into the runner. Let's listen. Let's look a little bit more into messages around that because this message, this energy really feels almost like um, where in the past you have been trying to hold yourself together. You finally get to a place where you're kind of holding yourself together. You're, you're, starting to think about your healing and the future you're working through some of that healing and then you get this kind of almost sponge-like energy that comes from your person over here who is feeling you healing and starting to move away and they're sponging you back and you're not kind of not wanting it in that sense um that's that's an interesting vibe because i think you would want this person if it wasn't for that vibe um <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what else you need to know about this. And I'm aware this isn't going to be everybody. Some of you are going to say, I would take this person back even in, in spite of this vibe. Um, and the people who would not take them back will say, heal for like five more minutes and you're going to change your mind. That's kind of the feeling there. Um, so you've got the four of pentacles here. This is a sense of releasing and being able to give up. This is you recognizing and exploring the ability to be able to actually release attachments and this person doing no such thing. They are um, having a very similar energy to what they've had before, but your energy has changed. And um, that's they're very attracted to your energy, but they're not necessarily communicating to you about it. It's just kind of got a weird smothery feeling one of you got back to me and said I can't even fantasize about this person anymore it just kind of squicks me out and I thought fascinating usage of the term squick and um, I definitely understood what they meant um, and it's kind of what you see over here it's that spongy energy like kind of it's like oh I want you but I don't want you like that um, there is this sense of you moving on, you moving on and figuring out what it is that you want. And you don't even have to feel like you know what you want yet, but it's that sense of the energy of you moving toward it. And this is that. We've got the Nine of Cups here and we have Satara, which is the star. And um, it's the energy of moving on and having what you truly need coming to you. And what you truly need is more in the form of energy and healing than it is in a person. So what you're learning comes from you. It comes from your experience. It was triggered by this person with whom you've been having this experience, but it's not necessarily meaning that the two of you are aligning in, um, in a, in an even way right now. It seems like one of you is always a little bit more into it than the other one. And it, this is this feels like a cycle that has gone on or may go on. Um, it may continue to go on. It feels almost like when the two of you met, you um, might have had this soul recognition and then they really came towards you, but you kind of didn't receive and then vice versa. There may have been a little bit of that. It feels like there's energetically a little bit of that going on here. And when it's time for you to start moving away and they move towards you, you get the feeling a little bit of being the runner. So that's that's more what it is. And I'm trying to figure out how to describe it because um, a few of you have described this feeling and saying, I still want this person. I just don't want to feel like it's holding on to me in quite this way and sucking me down, you know. Um, so you've got the Eight of Swords here. We have the Eight of Swords and the Nine of Swords. And this is energy of you that they are particularly attracted to. This is part of why it's happening. It's all over these cards. So you've got your tendency to overthink, although it is still there, does not outweigh theirs anymore. You now have developed a sense of self-mastery. Just, it doesn't even, I mean... The thing is that they aren't working toward their self-mastery very quickly. And so when you develop something and everything that you do that is positive benefits them and vice versa. So every time you grow a little bit, it benefits them. And a little every time that they grow a little bit, it kind of benefits you. Um, but you've grown in a way that attracts them greatly. And yet is it's like they're not ready for it. And so they... They have a strange energy toward it, almost wanting to love bomb. 
um, but maybe not quite getting to the point of doing that and not not making good on it enough to the point where you feel honored. Um, and I feel like that's a big deal. Not feeling honored in this situation has a lot to do with that I feel like I'm turning into the runner. Um, and it's confusing for the people who are writing in. Some of the people that are writing in anyway feel like they're a little bit confused about it because they're like, wow, I did not see this coming. Um, there's this sense of not wanting to make any rash decisions, especially because maybe you didn't see it coming. But this is also part of what's going to attract them in. There's so much here um, that makes them, it's that energy vacuum. The concept of the energy vacuum once again comes up. Um, and the energy vacuum, we've talked about it previously. You've got your energy had been coming toward them and it made them uncomfortable and made them want to move away. And so you were maybe continuing to move toward them. So as you've now recognized, okay, so this isn't, this isn't happening the way I want. You start moving the other direction. I'm not going to chase anymore. They're kind of drawn back toward you. And so that's a little bit what's happening here. And that's a little bit what's showing up in both of these cards, the Malika of Swords, which is like the, the Queen of swords and the what is this ashikan which is um like the lover's card in both of them are in reverse okay fascinating fascinating we've seen all of these concepts but i think it's coming to a head for a few of you and making you a little uncomfortable in this energy so um hmm definitely not um what you would consider to be a, a positive, enjoyable feeling, but also you're very familiar with this energy that seems like it's turning into the chaser energy a little bit. And it doesn't even have to be really chasing you for you to feel like, I got to get out of this. Um, the son of staffs. Okay, so this is that in and out sort of energy that you might even start to feel like you have days where you're particularly... Um, attracted and then other days where you're kind of repelled by the energy for one reason or another might not even know why um, and here's one that I've experienced because my um, and I don't talk about my divine masculine very often because I have I have experienced multiple soulmates and the divine masculine with whom I have the type of relationship that we're looking at here um, I just kind of walked away and decided that, you know, if we were never going to have that communication that I was going to leave the door open for a friendship later and I would walk away. And so, um, this is, this is this really does fit though. It's like a feeling of wanting to not, not even understanding why there's less of a, less of a feeling that of wanting to chase and they don't even understand why they want to run away or why they want to start coming back toward you. You know, there's there's a lot of not being sure and things going b beneath the surface, but them being strongly, strongly attracted to you and you kind of not, not being attracted back to that energy as much as you would expect to be. That's what I really get. It's like that feeling of, I really would have expected to be more um, attracted. Let's see what comes out... Um, what else comes out as far as advice for you as in this situation? What should you be focused on based on what's sitting here on this table? Okay, unfinished business. Unfinished business, but unfinished lessons. That's really what it's going to be. Um, for you, it's unfinished lessons rather than unfinished business with this person. However, it may well manifest in unfinished business with this person. Um, you know, you may revisit that. So this is like the, these are the same card. This is the world, Dunia, the world, both of them in reverse. They're number 21 in the tarot. They are going full circle and finishing a cycle. There's a cycle that's not finished here. And that's probably the thing that, um, well, it's definitely the thing that you need to know here because it keeps coming out. Um, it's a repeated message, which of course is always very significant. But this one is all about, you have more to learn here and you're being kind of, um, you may be, you're in a better position to learn it than you've ever been. Um, however, you may notice that you're not feeling as strongly um, from an emotional standpoint about it. Might surprise you a little bit, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Something hasn't passed judgment here. That's that's 
what has to happen. There's a lesson that has to happen, and it's like another lesson that has to be learned again. You have a soulmate coming in that's going to teach you a little bit more of some of the lessons that you've already heard, uh, that you've already seen here and refined. And in that, the re the relationship here is going to change um, a little bit with this person that that you've been interacting with, um, but partially because of the, the, the change that you go through and we, what we called the other day, the glow up, um, that you're going to go through, that's going to make you a very different person. Um, it could mean that you come back and this remains stagnant and you continue to feel like the runner and you don't want this person back. That could happen. Um, but I think it's much more likely to even out. And instead of either of you feeling like there's a runner chaser dynamic, you can both just kind of be there and be able to reconcile what's happening um, in the energy between you. But that's something that happens a little bit farther off. There are some details that probably need to be worked out in the meantime. And so here we have um, we have the Kuat card, and it is the Strength card in the reverse. So the Strength card in the reverse, this one is... Um, very much about your fears winning out, very much about not allowing your fears to win out when it's clear that you still have um, a fair amount of the road left to travel, but you've got the light of, this is devil energy being gone. I didn't get too deeply into this one, but this is devil energy being gone. Um, so traveling this road is going to feel very different. Um, your strength is going to come back up as a result of that. Um, but with this Son of Cups, I think this probably is even more of what you want to hearken toward because this is going to be a, this is a really clean, beautiful, emotional energy. This, you see the bridge in this picture and it's like this person is manifesting this bridge to be able to cross it. And that's exactly what, um, what you're going to be able to do. And in this energy though, you're able to disconnect a little bit of your, um, energy overflow that you've been spending on this person and put it in a different direction. You have a new perspective that you're able to have here. It's just not um, not a very comfortable one, it feels like. Not a very comfortable perspective because it feels like you're forgetting something or you're leaving something behind a little bit. Um, oh, seven of coins does want to come out. Um, and, and so the thing is, you're not really leaving it behind. It's just kind of you're tending to something else in the meantime. But tending to something else is pretty important. I don't know if the seven of coins that wanted to come out before wanted to come out in the upright because um, this is about investing in yourself. And I'm not convinced that that was the feeling that was on the card before, which is maybe why um, it had to come out that way. You're going to have to disrupt a little bit in order to do that because you've got so much invested in this person that you've kind of got to disrupt connect a little bit of it um, to be able to have to be able to have the sort of growth that you really need here. Um, ultimately, it's going to be balancing your masculine and feminine energies and um, and being able to close this circle, being able to close this um, this cycle, being able to pass judgment, which we see that's not what's happened. So your focus here really needs to be on kind of yourself. It's very much a focus on yourself and what the efforts are that are directly in front of you. Don't worry about any other soulmates right now, essentially, is what this is telling you. You've got this one where the energy is a little bit... um it's a little bit shifty because now all of a sudden it finds itself kind of wanting to come back in your direction and you're like, what? Don't come back like that, you know, and, it, and this is all energetic. Of course, if this person reached out to you, it might take a couple of messages for you to actually get to this point and a couple of you, that's what's happened. Um, but so, you know, because you think, oh, I want to see this person. I want to talk to this person. And then you talk to him and you're like, oh, this is not the energy that I had anticipated. Well, the, the recommendation is to focus really more on, um, on yourself for this, for this time. So interesting question, super interesting answer. Um, I think I'm not sure what tomorrow's going to be. I'm going to look at the messages that come in from you, especially after this, because I feel like this one might have been a little bit disruptive. Super curious to hear what you have to say. I'm going to go through my inbox and meditate on the right, um, right questions to ask. So thank you for being here with me for this soulmate snapshot, and I'll see you again tomorrow.